you know, if you had dropped me here today, there would be more face masks. There would be maybe a little bit more social distancing. Mm -hmm. We're still staying cautious, but mm -hmm. it does really feel like fall of 2019. One thing I think that does feel different, and this is kind of quickly becoming a right. hallmark of yeah. your tenure as chancellor, yeah. is the growth. Right. So many people on campus. Right. And that has gone against the national yeah. averages, the national numbers. Yes. So nationwide, we've hemorrhaged about 1.3 million college students since the beginning of the pandemic. And even for for your public institutions, they've lost about three and a half percent of their enrollment. But our freshman class this year is 14 percent bigger than it was last year. And I think people are looking at this wondering, like, how UT is managing to be number one in the SEC for growth. Right. What have you had to focus on during your tenure to make that happen? I think there are two things that have fueled that growth, at least two things. Actually, maybe three, but I think we have, obviously, I think I'm really proud of the programs we have. Mm -hmm. Every university has great programs. I think we have amazing programs that are just now getting kind of national attention. But more specifically, I think there are two things, because I go out and I ask parents all the time, why did you choose University of Tennessee? Um, and whether they're from out of state or in state, I want to know what the answer mm -hmm. is. I was at move-in day for this this year, and I, I asked them all, like, why, why did you choose this? Yeah. And I heard things again and again, like, my daughter just wants to be a volunteer. So I do think the way we are really focusing on the volunteer experience, it means something different to come to school and be on this campus, to be on mm -hmm. Rocky Top, to go to Torch Night. I don't know other universities that do something like Torch Night. And you, you promise to step forward and serve and lead and mm -hmm. light the way. I think there, there's something to that. I think secondly, we have had a um, very intentional uh, enrollment, strategic enrollment strategy. Now, some of that started before I got here, mm -hmm. investing in out-of-state recruiters, for example. But we also have recruiters all over the state of Tennessee. So right now, we have a total of 26 recruiters who don't live in Knoxville. Mm -hmm. And they're spreading the word about this place. When I talk to the out-of-state parents, they will say, you know, my daughter, she just had this thing about coming to Tennessee. And then we came down here for a visit. It, it, it was done. We're coming. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the people were so friendly. They always talk about our campus tours, which are led by students. Right. So our students are attracting other students. So do you think it matters that it's the volunteers and not an animal or yes, some other I mask? Yes, I do. You think I think that that's huge. makes a difference. Yeah, and, and we, we make a big deal out of that, that that it means something to be a volunteer. What does it mean? I think we're getting better at talking about what that does mean. Mm -hmm. um, but one other thing I want to say, in addition to the freshman class, so our first year class, which includes freshmen and any transfers. Right. We're up in freshmen and transfers. We're also retaining more of the students who were here last year than we ever have. Mm -hmm. So we're up about 2,000 students. And at least I'm going to give you rough estimates. About 1,000 of those, a little over 1,000, are new students, first year mm -hmm. students. The rest of them are that many more students who decided to come back. So our retention has gone up um, yeah. considerably. And that's because we put all these efforts into student success. Mm -hmm. Students now have a career, they have success teams that chase after them and uh, they take their strengths. And you, you did it, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. you, you should know your top five strengths. If you don't, that's okay. You know, I've you never done you haven't done strengths. It. Okay. I've done Enneagram, Myers-Briggs, I have not done Clifton I don't strengths. know how we missed you because now every entering freshman takes their strengths. And that, that's become kind of a hallmark. So why do you value the Clifton strengths so much? So let's just, I'll just tell you what my top five strengths are okay. and how it helps me every day. I am strategic, achiever, positivity, futuristic, maximizer. And my sixth one is WOO, winning others. Over. I've heard, oh, that's an acronym. I didn't know we was yeah. an acronym. I thought Maybe. it was just like, woo. Yeah, no. was, okay. <laughs> like in the song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it means you're, you, you're good at persuading people and selling and communicating, that kind of thing. So those are my top six strengths. My entire cabinet has to have their strengths taken. And I have a grid that shows what everybody is. We all have it. And so if I hire a new vice chancellor or a new athletic director, Danny White, he's taking it. I can tell you what his strengths are. And we look at that together and say, as leaders, how does this help us? Where where are the gaps? Yeah. Where is it we're not as strong? And what are we going to do about that? So it's helped me as a leader. So it helps you understand each other as a team. Yeah, and the idea is we're all we all have strengths. Mm -hmm. Just you might not know what they are. 
Hmm. And so this helps you. The idea is you can be successful regardless what category, what set of strengths you have. The successful people leverage their strengths. Hmm. So part of what we want entering freshmen to realize, and because a lot of entering freshmen, I don't know if you felt this way, but you can get here, especially if you're a first gen student, and feel like I don't know if I belong here. Like my confidence, I don't, I don't really have the confidence. Hmm. But as soon as you begin to realize, okay, I am kind of good at these things. I'm going to use that to be successful at college. Right. So I think that's a combination of factors that are fueling our growth. And then just Tennessee is a great place to live. It's beautiful. There's lots of good jobs in Tennessee after you graduate. So I want to talk the growth has from your team, your in, and you know the news information team at UT is touted, it's celebrated, it's an accomplishment mm -hmm. against other universities. But it does cause a lot of logistical problems, and these are being felt by students, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we now have transfer students who have ha are having to live in the Holiday Inn off campus. It's functioning as a dorm. We have students right. living at Quarry Trail. There's plans right. to build the bridge across the river to kind of expand campus southward. Um, so, I think a lot of people look at these things. They look at parking. I know G10 the other day had a zero on the screen. It was totally full, which. Right you know, is kind of an anomaly. People right. are looking at this growth and thinking, is this sustainable? Are we growing right. too fast? Right. And what's the calculation there? Why accept more students than can be housed currently on campus? So we have housed everyone who wanted a room, mm -hmm. okay? Including the use of the Voliday Inn, I like yeah. to call it. Um, and, and here's the, here's the thing. We have so many jobs that need to be filled in the state of Tennessee that I feel is great obligation. And it's the mission is to get capable young people into this university and get them out in four years and into the beginning of a good life, which starts with a good job. So that's part of it. it it's not just growth for the sake of growth. It's growth because we can grow. We're in very high demand. Now, do, we're, we do not want to exceed our capacity. So, but you don't think we've exceeded our current capacity? I think we're close. <laughs> so no, next I don't year think we will be 14% growth. So, so that was unexpected. We okay. didn't think we were going to grow that much. Our predictive models this year mm -hmm. did not come in like they have every single year before. Mm -hmm. And it's we've just become really popular in every state in the, in the country and every county in the state of Tennessee. We're up in Tennesseans and we're up in out-of-state students. So we are, so let me tell you some of the things that, the reason I don't think we have exceeded capacity. Mm -hmm. Last year, at the beginning of the year, we had a lot of long lines around food. You remember that? Yes. People were complaining about food. I did a few 180s and walked yeah. out of the dining halls. Uh, okay, so what you see this year is 50 um, <laughs> robots delivering food. Mm -hmm. That was gradual over the last year. What you see are five food trucks here all the time. What you see is all, the dining halls are still operating. So we anticipated that need early, and I think we've, we're doing okay with that. Let's talk about parking. I was, in a, okay. I was teaching class yesterday and somebody asked me a question and I'm, at the end of it I said, is this a parking question? She goes, yes it is, okay. Have you been getting a lot of them? Uh, at the first beginning of every school year, right. we get a lot of questions about parking. Every university in the country does. Yes. So these problems are not unique to UT. No, it's the it's the usual complaint that people have about universities. I had it when I went to school. I had it when I got my PhD at University of Texas. You had to walk forty acres to get across to the all the student parking in Texas was all around the perimeter. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we're working on here is um, helping students. So we have an app. Have you used the app for parking? Uh, I've used the app for T-Bus, I've not used it okay. for parking. So we've been monitoring during those peak periods, because I'll get a nasty text or tweet or something, and I take a screenshot of the tweet and send it to somebody and say, is this really happening? Mm -hmm. And we look at the app, and we can see there are still parking spaces in this garage, this garage, this garage, this garage, mm -hmm. not the one you want at G10, which is like, right, I mean, I'm just making that up. Right. But sometimes it's because students are wanting they want the garage closest to where they need to go. Uh, but we know we, we have enough capacity at peak time. It's just not in every, it's tight, uh, I'll grant you that. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily, there's some that are zero, there's others that aren't. But 
But the the issue is we are we are engaging in full force planning of the next set of dorms. We've got approval for two more dorms. We're working with private investors who are building. Uh, we're working with the city to try to attract private investors to build apartments mm -hmm. for upperclassmen. So we've got a lot of things underway, but it's tight this year. It is tight, and we. We had a lot of students who we could have admitted that we did not, that were on a waiting list. And eventually we had to say to them, you'll, you'll need to find something else. So, Do you see the other campuses in UT, uh, UT Chattanooga, UT Martin, as kind of there in a way to release the pressure off of the flagship campus? I, I would love it if they could. What happens is our, each of our campuses has a very unique mission. Mm -hmm. So. You know, this year we notified a number of students on the waiting list. There is space for you at UT Martin, for example, there's housing. I don't know how many took them up on that. Just typically the people who apply to UT Knoxville don't apply to UT Martin. UT Martin is a wonderful campus, like a, feels like a small private school. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's in West Tennessee. But students apply to, we don't really, I wish it did work more that way. There's less crossover. Yeah. Between applicants. Because people are just looking, students are looking for different things.